My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, January 29th, and let us begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Remember the days past when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a great contest of suffering. At times, you were publicly exposed to abuse and affliction. At other times, you associated yourself with those so treated. You even joined in the sufferings of those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property, knowing that you had a better and lasting possession. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. It will have great recompense. You need endurance to do the will of God and receive what he has promised. For after just a brief moment, he, who's, he is to come, shall come, and he shall not delay. But by just one shall life be by, sh but my just one shall live by faith. And if he draws back, I take no pleasure in him. We are not among those who draw back and perish, but among those who have faith and who will possess life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. Though he fall, he does not lie prostrate, for the hand of the Lord sustains him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how, or of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? 
It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Mark's version of the seed parables is a little more succinct than the others. Um, you'll notice that there's one where he talks, you know, some seed is scattered on bare ground and some is in fertile ground and some is, you know, and so on and so forth. But basically, uh, Mark goes right to the, the mustard seed. And most of the parables found, and this is Mark 4 we're reading, most of those found in Mark 4 have to do with seeds. Years ago, there was a famous British New Testament scholar uh, by the name of C.H. Dowd, D-O-D-D, -D -D, maybe it's Dodd, um, labeled these narratives, he called them the kingdom parables. Um, that label has stuck to this day and is still you know, one that we use and refer to the kingdom parables, not just having to do with doubt. Um, they focus on the seeds and the, because the seeds start out in tiny form, but then they grow into something quite large, something big. Now, first of all, can any of you explain to me how seeds grow? Well, of course not. It's kind of an accepted thing. You know, you put them in the ground, you water them. In fact, normally we're complaining when they don't grow. My, my wife is, a, is an ardent gardener and she's going through the process right now of, you know, starting from seed instead of buying bedding plants. And it's frustrating for her because sometimes they grow and sometimes they don't. She doesn't always know why. And, and so there's no clear reason as to why they grow. I mean, we can do all the right things and it still doesn't happen. The second parable in today's gospel deserves some special attention from us because of this strange comparison between the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and a mustard seed. Everything about a mustard seed is unexceptional. I mean, it's just, it's not. It, 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 there's nothing, it's, it's ordinary. It's about as ordinary and small as you can get. It's just, it's not exceptional. It's tiny. It grows a few feet into, and the bush it makes is really ugly. It's unattractive. And so it can house a few sparrows in its branches, but I doubt we would grow a tree just to house sparrows. Some of us might. Um, this doesn't seem really adequate for describing the kingdom of heaven, does it? Um, a better description for this can be found in Ezekiel, by the way. Ezekiel 17, 22 to 24, the final growth of the mustard seed is compared to a giant Lebanon cedar. Now we're talking big, right? Big. Um, why would Jesus prefer to use such an ordinary, unimpressive image as a mustard seed that merely grows into a bush? Perhaps Jesus wants the disciples to know that the reality of the kingdom of God does not reside only in the great and the large and the powerful and the magnificent. Let me say that again, that the kingdom of God does not reside in the great only, in the great, the large, the powerful, and the magnificent. And yet, don't we go down that road? Let me tell you a little, let me give you a little side example though. Think of people in your own parish. Think of people in your own parish. Think of those people that, um, you know, are just exceptional people, but there's nothing. I, I think of, it, of a, an old sacristan by the name of Jim. Um, has my name. It wasn't me, please. Uh, Jim has since gone home to heaven. Jim was the best sacristan I have ever experienced. He was at St. Peter Claver. I wasn't a deacon yet. In fact, I met him before I was even a Catholic. And Jim was marvelous. Jim had sweater vests that were the color of the, were the correct liturgical colors. He always had the correct liturgical color. In fact, the priest I worked with there, Monsignor Gary Bowler, used to call him the walking ordo. The ordo is a little book that we use to 
to check to see what are the readings and what are the, you know, what's the color of the mass and, you know, those and the saints and so on. And he called Jim his living ordo and said, in fact, he said there were several occasions where he came in thinking it was a green day or some other day and Jim had a different a sweater vest on color and he'd have to go look at the real ordo to see what day he was missing, what, what saint day or what, you know, mart martyr day it was because Jim always had it right. We're called to be like that. We're called to be like Jim. Not, not that we're, you know, we're grandiose and making great things happen, but that we as Christians live out our life. And you'll hear me say this a lot, that the whole Christianity thing is not church on Sunday, sin on Monday. It's having people see us and say, I want what that person has. And not necessarily meaning the Christianity, but the peace of mind, the joy, the way we treat people. We need to be examples in the community of how Christians should act. We shouldn't be the sign that says, don't be a Christian because you'll be like them. We want to be the other. We want people to say, I want what that person has. If, the, if being Christian will make me like that, that's what I want to do. And that's the story we hear. We need to be that little mustard seed. We need to be that little thing that implants itself in other people by the joy and the way that we live out our faith. Amen? Amen. Mustard seed. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they may be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord give us the grace to live in full fellowship with our brothers and sisters of other religions, praying for one another open to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local level, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, for we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Be that mustard seed. Amen. God bless. See you tomorrow, Saturday.